We're in New York City to meet a gentleman who's a true legend of British tailoring. In the late 1960s, he shook up Savile Row before going on to found his own house and develop a unique and signature style that is instantly recognizable. Today we're speaking style with Edward Sexton. I was always very, very influenced by the 30s and the 40s dress sense. There was a certain romantic elegance to it all, and that really suited my sight very much. And in those days, you know, the emphasis was all, it was a drape jacket, it was a drape coat, so it was all about the shoulder, the chest, and the hip. Not so much emphasis on the waist. It was, it was a, a much more fuller jacket, and, but very elegant, worn with a very full trouser. And I liked that look, but it didn't particularly suit me too well. Now you started at a very early age, getting yeah. into tailoring. What interested you in it in the very beginning, and, and how did you get into it? I suppose tailoring and clothing has always been in my DNA, in, the fa in my family history. Uh, and you know, from a young kid, you know, on my school holidays, I would work in one of my relations' workshops. Uh, in the trousers, making trousers. So I was always in that in environment, and you know, from a very early age, I understood the, the mechanics of, 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 a, of a workshop. But uh, actually, when I left school, I didn't immediately go into uh, tailoring. I, I sort of went into the catering business. Really? And, uh, yeah, I was. A, I experienced a side of life once we. I lived in South London, so to cross over to the bridge to go into the West End of London. I'm working in a very big hotel there. You met, you know, I saw a different lifestyle completely of people going dressed, coming out for dinner in the evening prior to going to the theatre or the opera. You know, and I was, and I've seen food that I'd never seen before, like caviar and smoked salmon. It didn't exist in my childhood. So I, I thought, you know, that, I, that sort of inspired me to want to, uh, to have nicer things in life. I was still tinkering and yearning um, for the tailoring business. I got a job in the in a, in a tailor's workshop, and uh, I started my apprenticeship there as a very young young kid. But all the time progressing, and then although I was working as a young cutter in a company, an assistant cutter, with a famous company called Kilgore French and Stanbury, I was very privileged to to work under Mr. Fred Stanbury himself, who tutored me, and. Uh, I knew to develop oneself and to express yourself and to make the styles and the, the, create the work that you wanted to, uh, you had to go outside and uh, so I started moonlighting. When you first opened your studio on Savile Row in 1969, you kind of really shook things up there. Yeah, again, it was, you know, uh, when we started in Savile Row, we did not intend to, well we had no idea that it was going to change Savile Row to the extent that it did. Was that just because it was the first new establishment? We were the new boys on the block. Yeah. We were the first company in a hundred years to start a new company on the road. Normally one would inherit it from their fathers or the, 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 the old, old family uh, aristocratic way of, of doing business. But we weren't aristocrats. We. Uh, we were working guys, two young fellows that wanted to build a business and express ourselves in our own styling. That's another thing I wanted to mention is you're known as being something of a celebrity tailor and a lot of your early clients were quite famous. Again, that, in my opinion, that was, <laughs> that was just luck, if you like. You know, we never planned these things. So what, what's one of the most memorable celebrity kind of... Uh, Moments? Yeah. Well, Joan Collins came into our show one day with, her, with one of her husbands, Ron Cass, and we were to, we was making clothes for him. Then she she saw some things hanging there that were made for Bianca Jagger, so she got very excited. We put some models on, and she loved it. And the shoulders just suited her. So yeah. when we were dressing her, we could really go quite quite to the forties with the full shoulder, the real Joan Crawford type look. So that you know. And I love doing all new things all the time. Even today, I love doing new, exciting things because to do to make the same style day in and day out is, is wonderful. But to keep the edge, you you gotta challenge yourself all the time. So it's, it's it was very 
exciting and it still is but so that's really was was a very memorable moment for me what kind of uh, what kind of suit and did uh, Ringo Starr we dressed get? Twiggy Twiggy was very sure. famous uh, we, she was one of our first lady clients also what and your earlier question what was Ringo like yeah. Ringo's <laughs> very dry you know he's got a very <laughs> he's got a very um, uh, cool nature he's very laid back and he has a very dry sense of humour, and uh, <laughs> but you you heard you heard things back from other people. Oh, Wingo really liked that. So you've had your own studio since the 1990s, um, and of course you still do full bespoke. But now you're starting to offer something you're calling custom bespoke. Can you explain to us what that is? Well, obviously the, the bespoke, true bespoke. As, as several understands, is is 100% made under my eye in our workrooms, and now so we have a, a, a different side to our business whereby a younger person could come in or anybody could come in any shape or size, and we treat it and we take them through a similar bespoke measuring process, but we then we cut the pattern in London, and then we send the fabric and the pattern to China, and the finished suits come back and we then do any small adjustments in in house so full bespoke in US dollars is about 6000 and with the offshore bespoke we're talking about 2600 dollars 2600 that's a very big difference but it's, big difference. it's and it really lowers the barrier to entry for someone who's interested in getting into a bespoke or but custom yeah the suit. philosophy being that as soon as that uh, client that's been made to measure bespoke will ultimately aspire to have full bespoke handmade London. Well, Edward Sexton, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and uh, hope you enjoy your trip to New York and have a safe trip back to London. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs>